thought it would be fun to kick off today's video with a fun exercise in perspective. Now ask any data center and infrastructure admin what one of the hardest parts of their job is. An answer you'll likely get would be how hard it is to explain what it is they actually do, especially to someone that has never stepped foot inside a data center. Now, let's make that more interesting. I want you to turn their entire technology stack upside down on its head one time every five to 10 years, requiring new certifications and skills, jobs, and even entire career changes, new business objectives, and more. Over the course of the last 20 years between Y2K and Active Directory, the onset of VMware and virtualization, converged and hyper-converged infrastructure, and now cloud computing, it's very easy for those on the outside to turn their noses up and have an adapt or die kind of attitude towards this without understanding the real impacts to infrastructure admins and ultimately how that can completely destabilize an entire IT shop or the entire company. As a former admin myself, I know how much that can sting. So here we go again, my fellow admins. Technology has been turned upside down on its head yet again. And your leaders are likely telling you to move some arbitrary percentage of your infrastructure to the cloud. There are plenty of reasons why you want to entertain that, but that's another theoretical conversation we can have down the road. For this video, let's focus on the how. As a follow-up to the recent Cloud Field Day 13 event, I've spent the last couple of videos here on the channel talking about the different types of customers I see here at NetApp and their relative interest in our various cloud products. The first video was geared towards developers and cloud-native DevOps architects, so if that sounds like you, here's the video you don't want to miss. The second one bridged the gaps between on-prem and cloud with traditional enterprise applications, so if that sounds like you, this is the one you don't want to miss. But this one, this one I intentionally saved for last, mostly because it's very near and dear to me. I've been through it twice. What you're going through right now, I went through with Active Directory and Windows 2000, and I did it again five to six years later with VMware. So I know this video is for us because when your leadership walks in and asks you to do something crazy like completely upend everything and put it in one of the cloud providers, a lot of the times our response is, I don't think that means what you think it means. So it's left to you, my dear admins, to figure out the how, oftentimes without having any say in the why. And while I spent a lot of time in the previous videos going over the things that app owners and cloud architects could use to build in the cloud, I specifically want to go over some of the tools you can take advantage of immediately by extending your existing footprint into the cloud. Notice I said into, not onto. One of the easiest ways for on-prem admins to get started with consuming cloud is sending secondary storage up there, such as backups and cold archival storage. We can stand up an ONTAP instance in any of the cloud providers using CloudVolume's ONTAP and take full advantage of SnapMirror and SnapVault as if it's just another storage array in a secondary site. For you, I want you to think of the cloud as an extension of your existing data center footprint. Now, if you're not licensed for SnapVault, don't worry. You can use our cloud backup service to pull cataloged backups off of any ONTAP instance and store them in object storage. In some cases, this might even be a better option than SnapVault anyway, but your mileage may vary. In addition, if you've got a fancy all-flash FAS on-prem that's getting filled up with a lot of cold data, you've got a few options for auto tiering as well. Now, when people hear tiering, most times their mind goes straight to moving files based on certain file attributes like age date and last access, last modified, all that stuff. But that's not what we're doing here. ONTAP has a much more granular approach to tiering where we do it at the block level. We'll collect a bunch of aged blocks based on policies you define, chunk them into 64 megabyte objects and store them off in object storage with zero disruption to the application or end user. We call this technology fabric pools and you've probably heard of it what you may not know is that we have a cloud tiering service where we do something similar but store the tiered objects in the cloud instead of an on-prem storage grid I can't tell you how much storage and cost this has saved so many customers over the last few years you bought that big beefy AFF to be a powerhouse storage system, not store a bunch of cold data. So extend its life and let cloud tiering auto manage where the blocks of data are stored. All right, so we've talked about backups and tiering of cold data as a, it's a good starting point, but let's take it up a notch. What if you wanted to centrally monitor all of your resources on-prem and in the cloud. This is where Cloud Insights comes into play. If you're familiar with our OCI product or On Command Insight, just know that Cloud Insights accomplishes several key goals that we had, which was a complete ground-up rebuild of OCI into a full SaaS service 
No more installers, no more agents. It has more managed units for you to monitor, and it can even do deep inspection into Kubernetes clusters and pods, and use some machine learning to monitor behavior and trigger snapshots anytime any anomalies are detected, such as ransomware protection. Yes, you heard that right. Built-in and native ransomware protection without having to have third-party software hooked into and scanning your data. Now, whether you're using NetApp Gear or not, you need to look into Cloud Insights as a central monitoring tool. I've got it teed up for a full deep dive video coming soon, so make sure you're subscribed here so you don't miss it. The big takeaway for NetApp customers is that you get basic monitoring for all of your gear with Cloud Insights for free. There are plenty of add-ons to build upon that free tier, but it's a great starting point to get comfortable with the dashboards. And finally, all of this is brought together with Cloud Manager, NetApp's universal control plane for storage and data management. Create an account, import your on-prem arrays, deploy instances of cloud volumes on tap, connect it to S3 and any of our other cloud storage services, begin snap mirroring, tiering, and syncing to your heart's content all managed in a single place. Once you have it all loaded up, you can begin to use other add-on services like Cloud Data Sense to map and monitor all of your data and scrub for any compliance issues, or Cloud Sync to evacuate legacy gear, even if it's not on tap. I mean, you, can you imagine managing ESX hosts without vCenter? I mean, I certainly can't. I mean, I did, but in the before times, you know. Just because I did once doesn't mean I ever want to go back to that world. Once you find your way into the Cloud Manager, you'll fall in love with its simplistic, centralized management of your entire global storage footprint, and combined with all of the tools that we just talked about, it is one of the easiest ways to begin offloading some of your storage and infrastructure to operational cloud resources. Thanks for tuning in for this follow-up series on Cloud Field Day 13, and be sure to check out some of the other videos here on the channel before you go, and let me know down in the comments if you have any questions. Until next time, Take care.